Oh, it's been a minute since we've been able to check in with something that Trump said, and hey, imagine that. He called the failure of doing Afghanistan right. Um, he called it four years ago. <laughs> Trump warned against a hasty, hasty withdrawal from Afghanistan four years ago. He was president, okay? So you can see where all the planning started to go into place at the time. But yeah, once again, mm, like sands through the hourglass, Trump was proven right. Former President Donald Trump, nearly four years ago, warned uh, warned against the exact consequences of a hasty withdrawal from Afghanistan. At Fort Myers in Virginia, Trump delivered a speech outlining his strategy in Afghanistan and South Asia, where he said the nation must seek an honorable and enduring outcome worthy of the tremendous sacrifices made, and warned that a hasty withdrawal could create a vacuum for terrorists in the country. Yeah, pretty obvious, but at least somebody's saying it. One of the adults in the room said it. His warning is precedent, or is prescient rather. He was president at the time. Given the recent hasty and disastrous withdrawal that was an extraordinary success, remember, under President Joe Biden, which was marred by chaos, violence, and overwhelming success. Stop lying. Your ability to watch video footage from on the ground is really disrupting our ability to push a narrative here. Fuck. And the death of 13 Americans by an ISIS, ISIS K, okay, fact check losers, a suicide bomber. Trump said in a speech on August 21st, 2017, I will not be reading all of this in Trump voice. I arrived at three fundamental conclusions about America's core interests in Afghanistan. First, our nation must seek an honorable and enduring outcome worthy of the tremendous sacrifices that have been made, especially the sacrifices of lives. The men and women who serve our nation in combat deserve a plan for victory. They deserve the tools they need and the trust they have earned uh, to fight and to win. Second, the consequences of a rapid exit are both predictable and unacceptable. 9-11 was the worst terrorist, terrorist attack in our history. Uh, it was planned and directed from Afghanistan because the country was ruled by a government that gave comfort and shelter to terrorists. A, a hasty withdrawal would create a vacuum that terrorists, including ISIS and Al-Qaeda, both of which are back, uh, would instantly fill. They have done just that. Uh, just as happened before September 11th. This is happening just before September 11th. It really is Don Stradamus. And as we know on, oh, in 2011, America hastily and mistakenly withdrew from Iraq. And as a result of our hard-won gains slipped back into the hands of terrorist enemies. Yeah, exactly. That's been noted and that should have been the rubric going forward to not do that plan. But hey, what did they do? Well, considering the same people are practically back in charge, the vice president at the time is now the president, right? So hey, uh, everybody loves a good reboot, right? Our soldiers watched as our cities they had fought for and bled to liber oh, liberate, excuse me, and won, were occupied by a terrorist group called ISIS. The vacuum was created by leaving too soon, gave haven, oh, gave safe haven for ISIS to spread, to grow, to recruit, and launch attacks. We cannot repeat in Afghanistan the mistake our leaders made in Iraq. Third and finally, I conclude that the secretary threats, oh, the security threats, my mistake, you know, was or we face in Afghanistan and the broader region are immense. Today, 20 U.S. designated foreign terrorist organizations are active in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Things that uh, were apparently unforeseeable at the time by the generals that are in place right now. But uh, back in 2017, you knew that uh, those terrorist groups were taking place in Afghanistan and Pakistan. That's cool. Uh, the highest concentration in any region in the world. For its part, Pakistan offer, oh, often gives safe haven to those Agents of chaos, violence, and terror. Uh, Qatar as well, Iran as well, but hey, you know what? Speech had to be somewhat concise. The threat is worse because Pakistan and India are two nuclear armed states uh, whose tense relations threaten to spiral into conflict, and that could happen. But later, India elected Modi, who became one of the strongest allies to Trump during his administration. Haven't heard word one out of him lately. But hey, wouldn't it be nice to have like a leader right now talk somewhat like this, you know? At least give the illusion that there's a plan instead of just saying, Don't look at anything that we did. It was a massive success. No questions. But, hey, you know what? Instead of taking any responsibility for criticism, if any arises, just delete it. Mom of slain Marine censored on Facebook and Instagram after she blasted Biden for rolling his eyes when she blamed him, telling her whatever, and repeatedly checking his watch as they mourned their children and spouses. Yeah, I seen this one pop up yesterday. It's a little bit of an old story, but it does bear repeating because we are talking about a fossil and his failed plans. 
Now, she posted this. Uh, I think that this is an Instagram post, but I'm not too sure. Uh, you guys know the social media better than I do. I suck at it, mostly because I don't care that much about it. But let's see what was so uh, so terrible about this that it needed censoring. President Joe Biden, Joe Biden, this message is for you. I know my face is etched in your brain. I was able to look you straight in the eyes yesterday and had words with you. And after I lay my son to rest, you will be seeing me again. Remember, I'm the one who stood five inches from your face. And I was letting you know I would never get to hug my son again, hear his laugh, and he tried to interrupt me and give me your own sob story and had to tell you this isn't about you, so don't make it about you. You then said you just wanted me to know how you feel, and I let you know that I don't know how I feel, and you do not have the right to tell me you know how I feel. You then rolled your fucking eyes in your head like you were annoyed at me, and I let you know that the only reason I was talking to you was out of respect to my, for my son, and that was the only reason why I proceeded to tell you again how you took my son away from me, and uh, how. I will never get to hug him, kiss him, laugh with him again, etc. You turned to walk away, and I let you know my son's blood was on your hands, and I threw... Oh, and you threw your hands up behind you as you walked away from me like you were saying, okay, whatever. Oh, now I can see why they took it down. About two-thirds down, she makes some uh, rather innocuous claims that you can make in the comments section, but you can't make when you're just recording a video because YouTube's fun and fair and honest. Um, so I see why, but I'll just read the rest of her statements because, uh, the, hey, might as well get out there. You turned your back on my son, on all our heroes. You are leaving the White House one way or another because uh, you do not belong there. My son's blood is on your hands, all 13 of them. Their blood is on your hands. If my President Trump was in his rightful seat, then my son and their other heroes would still be alive. You will be seeing me again very soon. I guess you could take this as a threat, but again, it wouldn't pass a Brandenburg test at all. Clearly a distraught mother, justifiably so. But her final line is pretty cool. You are nobody special, Biden. America hates you. Yeah, have you seen his approval rating? Uh, nobody likes him. We can at least say that for sure. The 42% right now, it's uh, pretty abysmal. That mother's letter was censored. You can kind of see why, and because Instagram and Facebook are... Oh, what's the nicest way to put it? Uh, blitheringly retarded. Something like that. Isn't that cute how the blood of my son is on Biden's hands and they chose to silence me? Chapel? Shanna Chapel. Sure. Said is in an angered Facebook post on Monday, it seems Instagram took it upon themselves to delete my account because I am amusing. Oh, assuming it is because I gained so many followers over my son's death due to Biden's negligence. No, you made some spicy claims and Facebook's at the forefront of deleting anybody's uh, wrong things. So that's kind of what it is. But yeah, I don't know about her Facebook account, but uh, I guess her Instagram account's down. But yeah, she made some spicy posts. Again, like 90% of it, I agree. Actually, all of it, I agree with. So. Joe's responsible for this, and if he did do what she claims, would you keep digging deeper into the hole to find my respect level for Biden? Like, there's none left there anyways. She wasn't the only one to be uh, very spicy when it comes to dealing with Biden. I hope you burn in hell, families of slain servicemen. Recall raw response that Joe Biden at Dover ceremony. Yes, the one where... Some reports are saying he was checking his watch every single time the remains of the servicemen and women were coming off the plane. That's totally different than just, you know, kind of shaking your arm out and then noticing your watch and just taking a look. That's totally different if he was doing that every time. You could kind of rationalize this. Again, this is a bit of a reach, but I could understand that because you'd like to, you know, because you have a son in the military who was a fucking army lawyer who died of brain cancer. It still sucks, but let's not pretend like he went out in the blaze of glory or anything like that. But again, yeah, you just want to note the time that you see them, and it's not like a Joe could remember any of that. But I guess, you know, hey, you want to note the time that you see the body, and, you know, it's not like there aren't any other people doing that, but whatever. You could kind of see it, sort of, maybe, I don't know. We'll get to real grasps at straws here in a minute. President Joe Biden's appearance at the dignified transfer of the remains of 13 soldiers slain in Afghanistan on Sunday was sharply criticized, according to accounts of the, of the ceremony, by family members. One woman screamed at Biden across the airport tarmac, I hope you burn in hell. Yes, they deserve to die, and I hope you burn in hell. That was my brother. According to Mark Schmitz, the father of 20-year-old Lance Corporal Jared Schmitz, who was killed in the suicide bombing, yes, we know already. Speaking to the Washington Post, they were more than happy to spin this as, oh, I don't know, my white nationalists go after Joe Biden. They're grieving family members of servicemen and women. Schmitz said he attended the ceremony with his ex-wife and glared as 
she was there. Oh, uh, and he glared. As he said, the president spent more time looking at his ex-wife while he spoke about his son, Bo. Oh my God, some old habits die hard. And I said, you don't ever forget that name. You don't forget that face. No, don't ever forget the names of the other 12, Schmidt said to the Post. And take some time to learn their stories. Bri er, Biden bristled at the comments from Schmidt. He said, I do know their stories. And your ex-wife has a great rack. Schmidt is one of the many family members who spoke about the visit with a Biden at the Dover Air Force Base. It's gotta be difficult. I'm not saying it was easy at all, but you can't run up and hug somebody if you had nothing to do with it. It's not going to work that way if you're the commander in chief, he told the Post. Schmidt indicated he grew weary of Biden talking about his son Bo Biden's death in a, an attempt to sympathize with the family. But he does that every single time things get hard for him. He just pulls my son Bo. It's like, we get it, okay? It was sad, but it becomes less sad every fucking time you bring it up. So you gotta find a new shtick, pal. But to be fair, and to use a Biden line, that was like uh, four or five days ago. So why are we still talking about that? Uh, let's talk about something else. Something that got uh, Trump impeached in the House the first time. Uh, making a phone call to a world leader and uh, having a conversation. Yeah. Um, isn't turnabout fair play? No, it's not because the Republicans are feckless. Uh, Afghan president warned of Taliban invasion, but Joe Biden focused on perception. Oh, okay. Okay. Two very rich men who achieved their wealth through very legal and upstanding ways, I'm sure. A leaked transcript and audio recording of a call between President Joe Biden and then Afghan President Ashraf Ghani about three weeks before Kabul fell showed that as the Afghan president warned of a Taliban invasion, Biden pressed him to change the perception. Oh, can't you just tell... Don't you have some state media out there who can go ahead and uh, run a different story? Can't you just uh, go ahead and tell them everything's fine? That'll work. Works for me, right? Come on, man. The pallet of cash is on its way over. According to a report by Reuters, interesting that Reuters would write on this. Oh, uh, looks like they're turning on Joe. I get it. In a 14-minute call between Biden and Guyani on uh, July 23rd, the Afghan president told uh, Biden, we are facing a full-scale invasion composed of Taliban, full Pakistani planning and logistical support at at least uh, 10 to 15,000 international terrorists, my friend. But Biden, on the call, pressed Ghani to publicly project that he had a plan to control the worsening situation in Afghanistan in order to receive air support. Interesting. Interesting. So lie so we can help. Huh. Hmm. In the call, Biden offered aid if Ghani would publicly project that he had a plan to control the spiring, spiraling situation in Afghanistan. But I thought Biden had a plan on this one. Hmm. We will continue to provide close air support if we know what the plan is. Oh no, you have the plan. Oh, he has the plan? Who's on first? I also told Ghani, I need to tell you the perception around the world and in parts of Afghanistan, I believe, is that things are not going well in terms of the fight against the Taliban. Oh, but around this time, he was saying that uh, there was only 70,000 there and the security force was well-trained, well-equipped, and no, they'd be nothing to just push them back. Interesting. Hmm. High crimes and misdemeanors. And then, oh, and there is a need. Whether it is true or not, there is a need to project a different picture. I wish he'd take his own advice, he told Ghani, and urged him to give a press conference with Afghanistan's prominent political figures, begging a new military strategy. That will change perception. That will change an awful lot, I think. Oh, just like every time you get up there and talk about, oh, you guys can have your freedoms back by, uh, by January, or by J J Independence Day, you know, on January 1st and 6th, the terrorists, ah, oh, where's my pancakes? Biden also praised the Afghan military as the best and clearly capable of fighting well and promised that the U.S. would continue to fight hard. Oh, those words aged like milk non-military to make sure that the Afghan government survives and grows. Miley told Ghani, the perceptions of US or the United States in Europe and the media sort of things is a narrative of Taliban momentum and a narrative of Taliban victory. And we need to collectively demonstrate and try to turn that perception, that narrative around. Interesting. Oh, yeah, that was a uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, that very same woke general, Mark Miley, the one who wants to learn about white rage. But it looks like, in at least in that phone call, he was very concerned about brown rage. 
But what about Marine General Frank McKenzie? I do not believe time is our friend here. We need to move quickly. Oh, no, no. But uh, all of the generals couldn't have foreseen anything like this. Couldn't have foreseen this. Man, that 16-minute speech sure is looking real fucking nice from two weeks ago, huh? Yep. What are they going to do about it? What are the Republicans going to do about it? This fucking phone call, man, is pretty damning. Is how Biden respond? Oh, uh, we're not done with you yet. Uh, ISIS-K will we'll come to get you. Dude, that's like a Dr. Claw threat to fucking Inspector Gadget. For Christ's sakes, I'll oh, get you, Gadget. And it's like, don't worry, he's got the fucking dog and he'll figure it out. Oh, no, they actually left all the dogs there. Sorry, my mistake. Uh, President Biden had issued a warning to ISIS. Coruscant? That fucking shit sounds like a Star Wars villain. Like, whatever. I'm sure it means something in sand people. Uh, the group, which killed 13 U.S. service members in a suicide bombing at Kabul airport, has said that, oh, who caused Americans harm will pay the ultimate price. Really? As you fucking tuck tail and run? Yeah, we know what your strategy is going to be. Go. This is uh, d front page news on CNN. Front page fucking news. Tr I, I read this and it I, I don't know. I don't know. White supremacist praise of the Taliban takeover concerns U.S. officials. This is what they're concerned about. Not the Taliban takeover itself. White supremacist praise. Which white supremacist? One anonymous Instagram post. That's it. That, 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 that's their proof that uh, white supremacy is out there and it's the most dangerous threat to the world. Even though the Taliban, you know, like a terrorist group, ISIS-K, Al-Qaeda, uh, ISIS proper is out there in the Middle East uh, planning the death of America. But yeah, no, no, this uh, one, uh, maybe potentially white supremacist, we don't know, but this is CNN. And you know what? These are the people that we're intellectually fighting against. They take this shit as fucking gospel. As the United States backed government in Afghanistan uh, fell to the Taliban and U.S. troops raced to leave the country, white supremacist and anti-government extreme. Uh, two very different groups there. Don't you be trying to link the two. Extremists expressed admiration for what the Taliban accomplished, a worrying development for U.S. officials who have been grappling with the threat of domestic violent extremists that's why they put out that little press release that little terrorist alert that said anybody oh uh, we should expect more terror around the anniversary of 9-11 the 20th anniversary of 9-11 why do you think they keep designating people who are more critical of this situation they're trying to sweep it under the rug talked about this fairly extensively yesterday and then they're going to get the boot to come down on everybody's collective heads very, very soon. Why? Because you question the government. That praise has also been covered with a wave of anti-refugee sentiments from far-right groups. Which ones? And why are you taking in so many unvetted Afghans? Hmm. There are more expedient places you can be dropping them than bringing them over to the United States. Bring over the ones that helped the military, but just bring in a, or a bunch of refugees, uh, it doesn't fucking fly. There are people a lot closer to you who are trying to flee a tyrannical regime that you're telling not to come don't come don't swim don't float because you'll get turned back but meanwhile mahmoud and the rest of them get to fucking fly over on cargo jets without being swabbed and without showing their papers that's cool though I mean, make sure to vote blue come next september we'll have all your papers taken care of Several concerning trends have emerged in recent weeks. Like, which one? Can you provide any fucking evidence or are you just going to continue to talk in nebulous fucking terms? Have emerged in recent weeks on online platforms commonly used by anti-government white supremacists and other domestic violent extremists. See how they fucking frame everything? Oh, groups commonly using different platforms. Uh, the consuming different things like air and water. Uh, you guys are fucking useless. Including framing the activities of the Taliban as a success has a success uh in the terms of the taliban they were successful in their goals you just take that quote framing the activities of the taliban as a success it was a success for the taliban you can't just drop a quote in the middle of something that you're trying to poison the well on and then try to spin it to your own means well you can and you are right here it's just some people are smart enough to parse that out and a model for those who believe in the need for a civil war in the United States. Who are making these calls outside of Tim Pool? Uh, the head of the Department of the Homeland Security Office of Intelligence and, and Analysis, John Cohen, again, 
shekel doesn't roll that far from the tree, said on a call Friday with local and state law enforcement obtained by CNN. Cohen said, I don't care. Jesus, where's your fucking proof? For example, a quote taken by the Proud Boy to Fascist Pipeline Telegram channel. What? Like, are they trying to say that Telegram is a fucking right-wing hotbed? Okay. Or the Proud Boy to Fascist Pipeline Telegram chat? Whatever. These farmers and minimally trained men fought to take back their nation from the globo homo. What? They took back their government, installed their national religion as law, and executed dissidents. If white men in the West had the same courage as the Taliban, we would, be, uh, we would not be ruled by the Jews currently. Huh? Why don't you show the actual post? Let's see how, uh, let's see the response that both this guy's followers were. Like, honestly, globo homo is a derogatory word used to insult globalists. Oh, you can just call them globalists. That's pretty insulting itself. But is that what you guys have for proof? Like, that's pretty fucking pathetic. They just have a bunch of other fucking lefties in here. It's like Megan Squire, professor of computer science at Elon University, who researches the U.S. based extremist groups. She's a professor in computer science that researches domestic extremist groups. Oh, okay, so she's on a crusade. Cool. Maybe she would feel more at home with the Taliban has seen three main Afghanistan-related trends emerge on platforms used by a range of far-right groups, such- Again, you're just throwing around pejoratives. You're not saying anything. God, these people are stupid. But that's who we're up against, and you know what? These are the people who take these words as gospel. Oh, it's written in a CNN article? That must mean it's true. They aren't citing anything. They aren't showing anything. They're just saying words over and over again. White supremacists, neo-Nazis, proud boys. Style forums. Oh, yeah. Proud Boy style forums, not neo-Nazis, not Proud Boys, not white supremacists, just whatever we can lump in and call as white supremacy, yeah, that those type of people do that. Can you more clearly define that? Can you uh, actually be specific? No, because you're one of them now. Uh. Children, man. That's why I like to be specific and laser fucking focused on the target. CNN, man, you just pull it up for a fucking good laugh every once in a while. Uh, speaking of people that you need to laugh at, um, Mitch McConnell. And this is why the Republican Party is in the shape that it's in, because it should be just absolutely kicking the Democrats' ass from every single fucking conceivable perception, but they're not. But they're not, because this is the highest ranking Republican out there, right? Mitch Gamera McConnell. Like, Biden's not going to be impeached. Why not? Well, you know you don't have the fucking votes for it, but at least draw up the fucking articles. Do something. Be proactive about it. Oh, but at the end of the day, that's your old drinking buddy. Joe, you and Joe have been in the fucking Senate. You guys have been in public office for how fucking long now? There's one big fucking party. You ain't in it. President Biden will not be impeached, the top Republican in the Senate said Wednesday. All the president is uh, not going to be removed from office with a Democratic House and a narrowly Democratic Senate. Well, you could say the same thing about the House, but you know what? Hey, you only care about the Senate, right? Oh, uh, that's, that's not going to happen. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell muddled into his soup. No, I think uh, the way these behaviors get adjusted is that the country is at the ballot box. There isn't going to be an impeachment. Democrats control the House of Representatives by an eight-seat majority, not holding a slim one-vote majority. Oh yeah, but we got so many moderates that are there. Don't worry, that's fine. Kristen Sinema's not putting on a fucking facade, and Joe Manchin doesn't have a 90 IQ. Former President Donald Trump was impeached twice, but both times the Senate voted not to acquit him. Because you need, what, 60 votes? 60, 60 votes. Three-fifths of the majority. Yeah, obviously. But you at least need to put forth the fucking effort, okay? There's no excuse for any of the shit. And especially, especially with this phone call, Trump was impeached for far fucking less. Just checking in to see in with uh, what Biden was up to in the Ukraine. Got him impeached once, and then as soon as Biden got in there, impeached again. So, blatantly lied. Him and his generals blatantly fucking lied. Somebody's got to take the fall for this. And I'm not going to be as extreme as the mom there saying, you know what, I'll be seeing you soon. And it's like, you can't get close to the Capitol building anyways. There's still razor wire and National Guardsmen that are there. And in the coming weeks, it'll get worse because, oh boy, we got to talk about the coof next. And uh, things are progressing nicely. And by nicely, I mean horrifically. Viva Australia. I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.